Hi, everyone. My name is Elliot Gold. I'm Vice President of Corporate Planning at PGW, and I'm excited today to announce the launch of our first Philadelphia Collegiate Microgrid Design Competition. I want to start by first thanking our partners, especially Temple University College of Engineering and Dr. Corey Budishak, uh, as well as IEEE and Burns Engineering. I want to thank you all for attending or joining this uh, virtual information session today on our competition. I'm going to provide a high level overview of the competition and then I'll hand it off to Corey in a little bit to go over the technical details. At PGW, one of our corporate goals is we want to be proactively leading Philadelphia's clean energy future. And one of the ways that we're addressing this goal is by developing partnerships with the local universities and specifically the engineering colleges. We've been collaborating on developing undergraduate academic projects based on our real world practical engineering experience. We'd eventually like to go further in collaborating on developing new energy engineering related research and development projects. This collegiate competition is the next step towards us working together with the local universities in identifying and developing the clean energy solutions of tomorrow. Our other goal here is to demonstrate the strength of all of our local Philadelphia University's engineering programs. This competition, which is kicking off in the next couple of weeks, is going to be a two round process. Uh, both rounds will be simulations using the Homer software for teams of students, three to five students on each team to design optimized microgrid controller designs. We are asking teams to register by Monday, November 14th on the website that's shown at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, it's a really high level uh, registration page. We really just need to know who you are so that we can then follow up and sending you the more detailed kickoff instructions and, and um, materials. Round, the round one competition will occur over 21 days from mid-November through early December. Uh, the, there will be a team of our panel of judges that will then evaluate and select the top six teams based on their microgrid designs. These uh, top six teams will receive up to $200 each per team and will be invited to participate in our round two competition. The round two competition will also occur over 21 days in February of 2023. The, the second round teams will have uh, another 21 days to update and further optimize their microgrid designs. Uh, this will culminate in a live competition event on Friday, February 24th, aligning with Engineers Week of 2023. Uh, this and more information is available on the web page that's shown at the bottom of the screen. Uh, again, I'd like to uh, encourage everyone to please register for our event by Monday, November 14th, so we can get you signed up and can send you the kickoff instructions. Uh, also at the bottom of this page is the email address. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions at all. For now, I'll hand it off to Dr. Corey Budishak to go over the technical details. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Corey Budishak. I'm an Associate Professor of Instruction at Temple University in the College of Engineering. I teach Introduction to Engineering as well as a class called Solving the Climate Crisis. Thanks to Elliot for getting this started, and I just want to take you through some of the competition basics first. So, the basics of the competition is that you will be designing in a microgrid and thinking about the optimal makeup and control of that microgrid using a simulation software from UL Solutions called Homer. However, you're not just going to deliver this Homer file that's going to show your microgrid. You also need to communicate your results. You're going to have two ways to communicate this to two very different audiences. The first is going to be a one pager for the organization's chief financial officer. And the second is going to be the less than or equal to five page document for the director of facilities management. You need to think hard about these two audiences and how you might communicate different things to these two audiences. There are going to be several design criteria. You're going to need the load and resources, and the, your team must use the load and resource profiles that we provide. Your microgrid must also operate in both grid connected and islanded operation modes, which just basically means that it can disconnect from the grid. You can change the controller in Homer to any of the included controllers. You can have a bunch of different supported resources including PV panels, wind turbines, combined heat and power, and batteries. You may change any of these components, but you have to use the costs that are in the Homer file already. Some components won't have a file, won't have, some components won't have a cost already, 
So you can't use those components. You also must plan for if the grid goes down for five days at a time, and you must be able to satisfy 75% of the electricity demand during that time. You must also take costs into consideration, which is the cost of electricity in Homer, and this must be reported and must be a factor in the final decision. The discount rate must also be explained and be a factor in the final decision. The carbon emissions also must be a factor, and they must be less than 50% of the grid emissions. Teams must also discuss how their proposed microgrid project would positively or negatively affect the st stakeholders in the area. So taking a look at all that and what I've already discussed, this is the scoring rubric. I'm not going to go over this. This is included in the document you'll get when you start the competition. Uh, but it has a lot of the, the design criteria in it as well as um, the audience awareness as I've already discussed. Okay, so lastly, I want to take you through some of the um, some of the things you can do with Homer. So first I'm going to show you the starter file that you will be using. Um, this will this will look like when you first open up the starter file, this is what you'll be using. Um, you can see the schematic over here with all of those resources that I've already discussed, the PV panels, the battery, the CHP, the wind, grid connected, and then the electric load in two different ways, and the thermal loads down here. Now, the big thing is the starter file. Inputs do not match current results. Because we have so many different components here, if we hit calculate now, it would take a very long time to calculate. You're welcome to do that, but that's just what happens. So I want to show you, instead of doing this calculation, I want to show you um, a different Homer file. Bear with me while I get it. Just so that way I don't modify the starter file and I already have run this simulation. So I deleted the wind turbines and the solar panels just to show you an idea. So um, first let me just show you the sort of cost default type stuff. So if I was to go ahead and just say, you know what, I will add a, um, some PV panels. If I just go to this generic one and I go to add, then these costs come up right away. If these costs don't appear when you put in a, um, you know, a component, then you cannot use that component. Okay, so second, I want to show you some detailed results. Let's go ahead and remove that. Um, and then I want to show you the results. So if we go to the results, it might take a second. There's a graph of the, you know, cash flow over time, which is okay, and you could definitely have that as one of your reporting details. All of, all of us are going to have this for evaluation use because we're going to be using the demo version of Homer. That's totally fine to have on your final graphs. But let me show you some other things. There's also a sensitivity analysis graph which shows that if natural gas prices, that's the this y-axis over here, are really high and this discount rate is very high, that you actually wouldn't do any CHP, you would just have the grid, which is this color. On the very other end of the spectrum, if the discount rate's very low and natural gas prices are very low, and that's kind of down here, you can, you can see this kind of pinkish area. It's a little hard to see. And that would mean you should, you should put all of the combined heat and power generation in there. So you get an idea. Now, if we go back to, um, if we go to this table section, it shows you all the different simulations once it loads shows you all the different simulations that that Homer has run. And maybe I'm really interested in just seeing the details of one of these simulations. Maybe I'm interested in this one. So I can double click on that one and I can see lots and lots and lots and lots of data. And I can even go to different plots down here in the lower right hand corner. And I could even have Homer create a proposal for me as well. So if I go to cash flow, um, I can see that, but some of the really cool stuff that you'll definitely want to dive into is the electrical and thermal and the fuel summary, especially these heat maps of the, when the fuel consumption happens um, and how your CHPs are running and what your battery's like and um, what the grid looks like and when you're selling energy or when you're buying energy from the grid. So ho hopefully um, this gives you an idea of what Homer can do. Obviously I've just scratched the surface, but the last thing I want to show you is how to get help. So if we go up to this um, help tab up here, 
What I would highly recommend, obviously there's lots of different help, help tabs here. I would highly recommend taking the tour first. And I'm gonna jump very quickly through the tour because then I wanna just show you what happens at the end of the tour. Obviously you should go through this. Because at the very, very, very end, I'll even click through faster, the very, very end, there's a bunch of support sites as well as a training series and a user group where you can ask questions and whatnot. So a great resource um, to, to go through all that. So there's a lot of different ways that you can um, learn Homer, and I'd highly recommend you take advantage of that. Um, I appreciate you all taking the time to listen to this, and I hope to see you competing in the competition, and I hope to see your results. Thank you for your time.